Hey everyone, it's Friday the 27th of October and it's 20 past 10 in the evening. Today's video, I have a new barricade lamp to show you. It's new, well, it's new to the collection at least. And it's a version of this particular lamp that I didn't have. So I'm really glad I've got that. Um, and over here, more that way, <laughs> um, I've got another mountain bike to the collection. I bought this Wednesday afternoon, so I'll show you that. Um, I've got a funny story to tell you that happened to me at Sainsbury's petrol station when I uh, was filling up the new moped that I bought. <laughs> Embarrassing, but funny as well. Embarrassing for me, anyway. Um, there's also a story about theft, because I was a victim of theft Monday night, I believe it was. Um, and it has me completely puzzled. In fact, even now, I am still more puzzled than I am pissed off about it. In fact, one of the items that was stolen, I couldn't give two shits about anyway. <laughs> so I'll tell, we'll start with that story in a minute. Um, I just want to talk about my workshop because we're making some changes to that. And my stepdad's workshop because we're making changes to that. And there's some changes going to happen in this flat. So I'll talk about those as well. So. Yeah, I believe it was... Tuesday morning I was getting ready to go to Mum's. Um, Monday I was um, shuffling the bikes around because I store some outside. Um, usually the one I use the most, my two trikes because I just can't get them in the shed and I wouldn't get them in the shed even if it was empty. Um, so they're locked up outside. I've got an e-bike outside, I've got a spares repairs e-bike outside. Um, yeah, and then there's just like a couple of others that I stored all locked up. But uh, I had some good bikes locked up out there and I thought, I've got two in my shed that I might as well store outside because I just want them for parts. So I swapped around, I put two of the good ones, three of the good ones that are outside, including a recently bought Marin mountain bike in the shed and took the other two out and uh, put them up this end with the trikes. Um, I'd also put my pannier bags from my Blue Rally mountain bike, the free one, onto a Dutch three-speed that I'd recently acquired as well because the bags fit that better. Also, always getting caught in the back wheel on the um, rally. That wasn't really the most ideal baggage rack for that style of uh, bag. Anyway, I was actually using the Dutch 3-speed with the pannier bags because it's quite a nice bike to ride. Even though it's a ladies bike, it's quite a nice bike to ride. Um, I don't like calling them ladies bikes because I just think a bike is a bike these days. You know, the reason that frame was designed like that for the ladies dates back to Victorian times, you know, where ladies weren't allowed to flush their panties. So they designed the frame to be stepped through for that reason. It's so outdated nowadays, isn't it? Anywho. What I'd forgot to do that day was to actually lock everything up. In fact, the only thing locked up was my um, vintage Pashley trike and the electric bike, the working one. Everything else was unlocked, apart from mopeds. I chained those up as well. Um, so I'd gone down Tuesday morning. I was, you know, I was getting ready to go to Mum's. Walked straight past the bikes to get to the moped. You know, put my hat and everything on the moped, getting ready to go. And I turned around and saw the tail lights, mudguard light. Saw that lens for the uh, Dutch three-speed laying on the path, and I was like. Why is that there? That shouldn't be there. I don't remember it falling off and sitting there. So I picked it up, looked over to where the bike should have been, because that, along with the lady's racer, should have been over there. Both of those had gone. 
Now what I don't understand is, why did they take bikes that were worth a total of no more than 50 quid? If they sold them, actually to be honest, if they sold that ladies race, I don't think they'd have got a tenner for it, so about 40 quid's worth of bike they took. Um, they'd left my blue and silver trike, which is worth 200 quid, because I didn't lock that. That still sat there where I'd left it. Um, and they probably could have got more for a spares or repairs e-bike. I also left unlocked. But they left those and just took these two ladies' bikes for some reason. And I, just, I was just looking at it, I was like, why? I mean, I'm glad you left the trike there, because that would have pissed me off. It was my fault for not locking them up. I just come up here, you know, and get dinner and whatnot, and just totally forgot to go back down and lock them up. So, I did post it to a local group. I didn't have a photo. Well, I still haven't got a photo of the Dutch three-speed. Um, and I didn't have one for the racer at the time either. Anyway, that's not where the story ends. Yesterday evening, I think it was about 7 o'clock. Actually, it was a bit late, later than that, I believe. I went downstairs because I wanted to go just to the shop round the corner and get a few bits. And I went out back. And I'm, um, I was getting a different bike to use because I've got my rally back out of the shed to use that one. Minus the pannier bags because they were on the bike that got nicked. And I looked up to that end of the block of flats because I've got to go that way to get out to the road. And there was a bike leaning on the wall and I thought, that looked like my Dutch three speed. So I put my rally back down, walked up to the, where the bike was and lo and behold, my Dutch three speed has been returned <laughs> with pannier bags. Pannier bags are empty now, but there was nothing of any value in them anyway. I don't know why they emptied them. There's literally one of those screwdriver handles that you get in a socket set. So you put a little socket on it and use it as a screwdriver. I never use them, don't like them, and that's a cheap thing out of a cheap socket set, so I don't care. <laughs> There's a dead spark plug in there from my jog. Uh, a bicycle light bracket. No great loss because I've got bucket loads of those uh, over at the workshop. Um... And a bungee cord. No great loss. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I don't care about that. And I'm not too fast that the taillight lens got broken. Because A, I've got spares. And B, that was a shit one anyway. So I could easily replace that. Obviously, everything is locked up now. There's a lock through everything at the minute. Um... Yeah, we'll try not to make that mistake again, but with my memory, it could very well happen. Um, <clears throat> other than that, I didn't see any damage on it. It looks perfectly fine, so... I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever find the racing bike, but to be honest, I don't care. The only reason I wanted it, and the only re well, the only reason I had it, was because it was in a job lot of bikes and bike parts that I bought a couple of months ago from a guy in town, young lad, um, and he tried selling that racing bike like two months before he put it in with all this job lot bits and bobs. In fact, the spares or repairs e-bike I've got came from him as well. Um, and then there's a mountain bike I've got over at Mum's as well, which is actually in working order now. I'll fix that one up. Yeah, he was actually trying to sell it for 40 quid because it was, is, I don't actually know the condition of it now or where it is, but it was at least a fully working racing bike. It was just had the rear mudguard missing and it needed some new handlebar tape. Um, but he was asking 40 anyway and I think that was way too much. If it had the rear mudguard on it, and it had decent handlebar tape, then yeah, maybe, but as it sat, I think it was just more of a spares or repairs bike. 
and I was literally just going to take the pair of wheels out of it for a project I've got over at Mum's. I've got a racing bike over there. Um, and I was just going to scrap the frame, but it's going to take it down the tip. But, uh, yeah, it didn't get that far. <laughs> you should have took the wheels out of it. So, uh, yeah. No great loss. I mean, I'll, I'll no doubt come across another pair of wheels at some point, so. Yeah, I'm really not too fussed about that. But it's just the fact they left the more valuable stuff there, which tells me it probably wasn't done, you know, for monetary value. They weren't looking for money gain, were they? Otherwise they would have taken that. Um... So, maybe I'll see it riding around town, who knows. Anyway, let's take a look at this uh, barricade lamp. So, a friend of mine who also collects barricade lamps sent me this link over on Facebook for this lamp. It was on eBay. Um, and it's being sold as spares or repairs because I had a couple of bits missing and some wires broken on it. So I put a little offer in and I won it, or the offer was accepted I should say, and it is the Dorman Sun Flash, the Sun Flash version of the Traffy Light. Literally the only difference is between like this Sun Flash and the Traffy and the Highlights and whatnot is basically the type of circuit and the lamp. That's it. <laughs> the body and the lenses are usually all the same. You might get just a single-sided lens, you'll have a blank plate on one side. Um, anyway, this, it was missing the rubber button. It's not an original Dorman one, but it does the job. Um, and the button switch itself was corroded and didn't work. And there's two wires disconnected from it. And the neutral wire was actually cut quite short up in here, so I extended that. Um, extended the red one as well because it was meant to have like a plug to disconnect it but uh, only one end had the plug on um, so I just permanently joined it up and uh, you know, sealed it with a bit of heat shrink uh, and I ordered four button switches on eBay to replace the broken ones so now It works. And that's the difference between an ordinary um, traffic like this one. See, this one's got the Zenin in it. Ordinary road lamp, barricade lamp, just has a 6 volt light bulb in it. And other versions like the highlights, for example, I think it's the traffic B light that I've got up there. They are brighter because they have a different light bulb and still a light bulb but a different light bulb and you have to have, like this one, two 6 volt batteries in it otherwise it won't work. Um, and there is LED versions of these as well. Which I don't have. That's another one that I do not have. I don't have an LED version. So yeah, I'm actually quite happy to get this. been after a sun flash for a while so... I don't mind paying a score for this. For the Americans that may not know what a score means, it means 20 quid. Because uh, cosmetically it's not in too bad a shape, it just needed that little bit of work to fix it up. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what happened to me um, at Sainsbury's petrol station yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday, I believe. It was either yesterday or Wednesday. See, I'm, I'm having trouble remembering things that I've done this week for some reason. So, I took the Yamaha jog out, because that was getting low on petrol. In fact, the um, gauge was flashing at me when I started up to take it to Sainsbury. So I did that, filled it up, came back. Um, actually, no, I didn't. I did the Chinese bike first. But yeah, basically that day I thought, they both need fuel, let's get them both fueled up. 
So again, job was done, the leeway. <laughs> Rode that to Sainsbury's, fine. Um, put it on its side stand, because it's a lot easier than that centre stand. Um, unlocked my seat, undone the fuel cap, picked up the nozzle, put the nozzle in the fuel tank, and because uh, we've got new pumps at Sainsbury's now, we've got to press some um, either pay at the pump or pay at kiosk. I like to pay at kiosk because I'm really not sure, you know. I don't know if you have to put in the amount you want and then pay for it, or if it's does it the other way where you pump it, pump it, and then you just pay at the end. But anyway, I pay at kiosk, and uh, so I'd looked away, waiting for the pump to be turned on. As soon as I did that. The ped just toppled straight over onto its side. I have no idea why. I didn't knock into it or anything. It just decided to pass out, basically. No damage. You know, it didn't break any mirrors or anything. Surprising, it didn't even spill any gas out the fuel tank either. So I had to put the pump handle back down, pick the bloody bike up, and start again. <sighs> I just felt embarrassed. <laughs> Not too embarrassed though. Just a little bit. I think my ego was hurt though. <laughs> and I've had to top it up with um, engine oil because I was riding it back from Mum's one day this week. Again, I can't remember. And, uh, you know, I was cruising along at top speed, which is 35 miles an hour. That's what it's restricted to. And after a couple of miles, the oil light would start flashing until I dropped the speed. And I'd check the dipstick. I actually pulled over and checked the dipstick. And there weren't a lot on the end of the dipstick. The oil was literally touching the end of the dipstick. Um, and it did come with some 10W40, I think it is. I have kept the ball. So I thought I'd try and, you know, top it up on the spot. I couldn't do it. It went everywhere because I didn't have a funnel. I thought I'd be able to just get it in there and pour it in, so no. So when I got back, I uh, went round via Wilco's and actually bought a pack of funnels, different size funnels for £2.50. Um, and I actually got round to putting the oil in today, but then took it for a ride to Sainsbury's. I haven't cruised it at top speed yet to, to see if the uh, oil light problem has been fixed. But uh, yeah, it should. It's not 100% full, but it's higher up, the dip, way higher on the dipstick than it was. It weren't far off the full mark, at least. <clears throat> but that and the brake light switch is pretty much the only two minor issues I've had. It just needed a bit of oil. I've not seen it leak anywhere, so it's obviously not leaking. It just obviously hadn't been topped up. <clears throat> Even though I was told it had regular oil changes. Yeah. Did it have an oil change? No, it just didn't put enough back in it. I suppose that's possible. But it does, it's not smoking, so it's not burning oil. It's not smoking at all, actually, so it's definitely not burning oil. So that's definitely not the problem. It bloody shouldn't be. It's a three year old bike. I'm getting this Chinese. Maybe it's just thirsty and likes to drink oil. I just have to keep an eye on it. It's air cooled, so it's not like the oil is going to go into the uh, coolant system. I, I do know I keep scratching my chin. It's because I've got a spot or something hiding right there. And it's one of them things, you know, you, you get the itch, you scratch it, and then it just makes it worse. It just itches even more. You just feel like you're just forever doing this, you know, like you've got the lurg or something. Right. Um, my workshop. So, when my stepdad built it, with my help obviously, he opted for um, plastic sheeting on the roof, you know, that corrugated plastic sheet and stuff. Um, which is great, because, you know, I have shitloads of natural light in there. The downside is it leaks like a sieve. And I don't understand why all the water should be just running off and straight into the gutter, but it isn't. 
all down one side where I store the bikes it uh, just pisses in when it rains. We've even gone around it and put silicon in the joints because we, we did it properly, you know, we put the first sheet on and we put the last sheet underneath so it went like that so it ran down that way runs off onto the next one and then off and into the gut but it doesn't do that for some reason the rainwater's coming back under the joint and then just pissing in to the workshop so me and my stepdad were talking the other day and he was you know saying you know I'll have to order some more plastic sheet and redo it and then he said well why don't we just put boards up there and some roof and felt <laughs> and I thought you know what I think I prefer to do it that way anyway so yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to get some, I don't know what boards you want to do it, probably some OSB. Um, and then felt it. That'd probably be cheaper, because believe it or not, the plastic sheet that he bought for that was 150 quid. And I don't know why, I've just got this feeling that a few OSB boards and the roofing felt is probably going to be cheaper. <laughs> Uh, yeah, someone's dinged me on Facebook again. That's what that noise was a minute ago. So I'm going to do that. Um, I've got some LED lighting to go up in there now. Because it came out of my stepdad's workshop. Which is no longer a workshop. Um, yeah, a lot of the tools are now gone into my workshop. He sold a lot of the bigger woodworking tools he had, like his thickness of planers, he had two different ones, uh, routers and whatnot, he sold most of it to make some room, because the model railway he's got is going to go into there, so the workshop's going to become a model railway room. Now so far, um, he's got some of the bench up, built, but he's insulated it, adjusted the roof so it's higher um, so obviously before we did all this I had to rip out all the electrics all the sockets I put in for the workshop and all like all had to come out including the fuse box so there was a couple of days where we didn't have power out there aside from an extension cord um, yeah and what he did for me because I couldn't get over there a couple of days because it was pissing it down um, He'd ran the cables in where he wanted his lights in the ceiling. He'd ran the cables in where he wanted the sockets. Back to the fuse box. Um, so when I got was able to get there, all I had to do was take the fuse box down. So he could put the plasterboard up because he's insulated it. He's put like a plastic damp proofing membrane or whatever it is over the insulation. Then he's put the plasterboard up. I filled all the joins and painted it and it actually was quite nice. The lighting he got, it was 30 quid for a box of 10 LED um, recessed down lighters. The, I don't like them for the fact you can't change the LED bulb like I can with these GU10s I've got up there. So if they fail I can just change one. I've actually been using them once for years and they still haven't died, touch wood. <laughs> I've actually done pretty well. I'm quite impressed. Um, so if they die, you've got to change the whole unit. But at 30 quid for a box of 10, they're quite cheap. Yes, they're made by LAP, and a lot of electricians call that LAP crap. I don't mind those LED lights. They're pretty easy to install. Um, and they are all working, so I can't fault them. But I have used LAP socket outlets and they are crap. I, I hate them. I almost refuse to use the damn things. Um, <laughs> again, they're cheap, you know, what do you expect? <clears throat> so yeah, we're doing a lot of work there as well. Um, so yeah, the LED lights from the stepdad's workshop are going to go up in mine. Um, and eventually 
I will take them down eventually, but not quite yet. He's got the same LED strip lights up in the attic, which is currently the model railway room. Um, but I just thought that's a waste leaving all them up there because it's not needed. <laughs> it's just going to be used as general storage like most lofts, so we just need a light up there. Just so we can see, so I'm just going to chuck a fluorescent light up there. Or some, I'll think of something, I've got lots of choices. And I'll take those down, but I'm going to leave them up just for now. So we've got good lighting up there when it comes to uh, dismantling the model railway and whatnot and taking all that down. Once that's done, then I'll shimmy up there and take all the LEDs out. I doubt we'll need them all in the workshop. That's going to be overkill. I mean, I've got one LED light up there, plus two twin fluorescents, but those twin fluorescents take so long to start up. I don't know why. And then, of course, because it's so cold out there, they're so dim to begin with until they get warm. And even then, in cold temperatures, they can still be quite dim, so... Yeah, as much as I like the fluorescent lights, and they're more expensive to run, not that I use the lights out there that often anyway, but still... Uh, yeah, so... I'll get them swapped, but I think I'll wait until the roof is done first. Yeah, no, it's actually a group chat that's uh, causing my phone to go ding. Group chat on Facebook, that is. Uh, yeah, so, lots to do there, lots to do in this flat as well. Oosh. I'm not starting this video again. What I will do. It's probably something I should do before I start recording any video. It's just put the damn phone on mute like that. There we go. <laughs> right. I think it's time to look at the uh, new bike in the collection. So I got this Wednesday afternoon. And I found it on Facebook Marketplace actually the evening before and I was tempted when I first saw it because it did look a gorgeous bike. It is another Claude Butler so technically I actually own five Claude Butlers now. One of them is over at Mum's and I'm going to dismantle that for parts because the frame is totally shit unfortunately. I did try to sell it as a cheap sort of like 20-30 quid bike on Marketplace but not one message in two or three months and I keep relisting it so I'm, I'm just giving up. Um, so yeah. And then I found this one. And I absolutely love it. I've not actually taken it for a ride yet. Because I haven't had a chance for one. And for two it's been peeing it down. Um, now... The guy I bought it from, I have bought bikes from him in the past. In fact, I've still got one in the shed. It's a little um, folding bike, vintage folding bike. Italian, we believe. Um, and he was obviously telling me about this, how uh, it's actually a barn find. It was found in a barn, along with two others that he got. Um, well, the guy goes by Badger Bikes on Facebook. Um, it's not a regular thing he has up there, you know, he doesn't have bikes up there every week, but he does come across them, like this. He said the only thing he replaced was the handlebar and handlebar stem, because the other one had rusted so much, like it had been, been um, under a damp spot or something. But apparently they'd been in, all three bikes had been stored in this barn for about five, six years, untouched. Um, <coughs> and I just caked in dust, so he's completely cleaned them all down. Oiled up the chain. Um, changed the handlebar and handlebar stem. Uh, yeah, and put them up for sale. Um, I mean, he didn't have to tell me that the handlebar stem and handlebar had been changed, because 
I wouldn't have been any of the wiser actually, I wouldn't have noticed, I'd have just assumed that was what came with the bike. Um, so, considering he's that honest, I've got no reason to not believe him, you know, that that wasn't found in a barn and whatnot, and quite well believe it. Um, and I've actually looked this bike over. I'm not sure of the age. It's got like 1990s style um, trigger shifters on there, you know, the ones with the built in brake levers, which I absolutely adore. Favourite type of shifter. Do not like grip shift. Um, but I've also looked over and I've looked at the condition of the chain and the freewheel gears and the crank set, chain rings. They're in remarkably good condition. In fact, there's very little wear on any of them, if any at all. Most of the paint is still on that chain ring at the front there. So I don't think this has actually had much use. I'm pretty certain this has not had much use. It's probably ridden a handful of times and then for some reason the, the other bikes just put in the barn for storage and just never used again. I don't even know why this um, barn was being cleared out. All the guy told me was it was just a barn on a property that was being cleared out and everything in this barn apparently was just going to go in a skip. Which would have been a shame to skip that. I mean the frame is immaculate. I don't know if it's totally mark free, you know, as in chip free, but it's very clean. Um, I'm quite looking forward to going for a little spin on that. Hopefully tomorrow if the weather's fine, I'm not going to do it if it's peeing it down. But yeah, due to the recent theft from me, I was not going to leave this downstairs and I can't get it in the shed at the minute. Um, I've got some stuff right in the way that's got to be donated to a charity and I still haven't got around to doing that yet. Well, I said I haven't got around to doing that yet. I've just been too bloody lazy, basically. <laughs> I keep forgetting it's in the shed. <clears throat> but uh, blue is actually one of my favourite colours. And I do like that shade of blue. And I think that yellow goes with it quite nicely. And I like the fact that someone... We're not sure if that was actually put on at the factory, you know, when it was bought, or if the previous owner actually put it on, but the yellow bottle cage. I quite like that touch as well. It could have been put on at the factory, or um, might have been just a later edition from the previous owners. And, oddly, it's still got the front and rear reflector. And actually, as the brackets for those are metal, that would also say 1990s, actually. Because more modern ones have plastic um, brackets for the reflectors. Yeah, I would actually say that's a 1990s bike, and that is in remarkably good condition. I need to get this posted up on a couple of bicycle groups I'm on to see if anybody would know... I might just Google Claude Butler Miura and see um, if I can get any clues there. It's got quick release front and rear wheel, 21 speed, 26 inch wheels, which are branded, but I can't see it from here. Decent set of tyres on it. And I believe all the black outer tubing for the brake and gear cables is the original Claude Butler as well. That seat isn't though. Claude Butler at least all the other Claude Butlers I've got, have a Claude Butler saddle on it. That one hasn't, so I think someone has actually changed that for something else. It's a Bassano. Never heard of that. I have sat on the bike, it's quite comfortable. Yeah, I'm looking forward to going for a ride on that. I hope the weather is fine tomorrow. I don't mind if the roads are wet, but... That's definitely not going to be a wet season bike, at least not at the moment because it hasn't got mud guards or fenders for the Americans. And I don't like riding bikes at this time of year without fenders on it because I don't like getting a face full of bloody water. <clears throat> and I don't like my back getting full of water. It's bad enough when you're just getting rained on, let alone with that adding to it. Ah, oh, I forgot to bring a reflector out as well for that pedal because it's got one missing. 
I knew there was a reason I was looking at my box of reflectors this afternoon. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think I'll, if I feel up to it, I might pull the marin out of the shed as well. I don't know if I can actually show you the uh, photos. Bear with me two seconds. I cannot remember if I've got a photo on my Facebook. I don't want to show you everything, that's why I'm not going to turn you around. I have actually got one. Right, now I can turn you around. Pardon me, there it is. I'm just going to shift over here, zoom you in a bit. It's in good condition. I don't know how old this one is either. It's got the old cantilever brakes on it. But I bought it because I'd never owned a Marin before. Not even, you know, one that I've perhaps got hold of and sold on. Never ever owned one. And like this, um, well, like in English, <laughs> my brain doesn't uh, cease working momentarily. Um, yeah, that was offered to me by um, a guy I've bought a couple of bikes from in the past. Um, here in town, he just messaged me asking if I'd be interested in either of these two bikes, or perhaps both of them. Because uh, there was a lady he knew trying to get rid of them. A lady and her husband. Um, he said 35 quid, and I was like, yep, that sounds good. It looks like a decent, fun bike. Let's have something different. I did change the pedals because they're the horrible metal ones with a slope on the end like that, and I hate those. I hate that style of pedal, so I did change those. That's the only thing I've changed on it, though. I haven't done anything else to it. But, yeah, I did have to tweak the gears on this one a bit because the rear were just slightly out of sync. A little bit. Oh, and with this Claude Butler, there was an issue with the front gears. It wouldn't go into third gear. The actual lever wasn't pushing the um, mechanism enough to put it into third gear. That was such an easy fix. I took the cover off, um, and it's like a little lever that moves in and out. And it's supposed to move in when you move, push your thumb on the lever. So the, this little lever mechanism thing is meant to move in and push the mechanism around which pulls on your gear cable and moves your drayer mech up. Well it wasn't doing that and all I did was got a screwdriver in there and I just tweaked it like that. That's all I did, just gave it just a little tweak on the screwdriver and it's worked ever since. Whether it stays working or not is another thing but at the moment it's working so it's got to be one of the easiest fixes I've ever had. But uh, I think knowing that comes from experience because that is one of my favourite style of ge um, gear shifters, including the rapid fire version of it. You know, that one where you can click up the gears like three or four gears at the same side, um, same time, not just individual clicks, which is what these ones do. Um, it's actually the second bike I've got with that, my free rally. It's got the same style. But yeah, having experienced these levers, or these gear shifter set up for many years now, I've used them for many years, I sort of learned what the issues were with them when they do certain things. It's like anything, it comes from experience really, doesn't it? I think I'm just rambling now. <laughs> Bikes is one of them subjects I could probably ramble on for for yonks. But again, I wouldn't consider myself an expert, even though I've been tinkering around with bikes and fixing them up for like 25 years. Um, and the only reason I wouldn't consider myself an expert is because on these bicycle groups I'm on, I'm still learning things. Especially with a lot of modern stuff. Really modern stuff. 
and I mean really really modern stuff like uh, you can get these electronic gear shifters now, wireless gear shifters that work on batteries so the mechanism, rear mech and whatnot is motorised instead of cable driven so obviously when you shift click your lever on the handlebar it just sends a signal down to your drailie and it clicks it too over complicated for me, I wouldn't want a bike with that sort of thing on but in fact the only bikes I've seen it on are like the high end racing bikes so that's that's probably why I've never come across it myself because I don't come across such bikes <laughs> those are the sort of bikes where the owners would either take them to you know an actual cycle repair shop or they do the repairs themselves one or the other it's not something you know uh, little old me would come across so I'm still learning I'm learning what other methods people use as well to fix different things. Anywho, let's move on, shall we? So, what was it? Oh yeah, the flat. So, I've got three new doors to go up. One's got a bit wet thanks to the leaky friggin' workshop, but hopefully it'll dry out and, and go up there fine. Um, so myself and my stepdad have got to do that one day. And I'm going to put a Lego City in the lounge again. Because, well, I miss it. I miss the building, the creating, you know. I miss all of that, so I want it back. So I'm going to put it back. But well, that means I've got to rearrange the whole flat and make some room. It's one of the reasons I've been getting rid of stuff. I've actually had days where I've just been, you know, going through cupboards and things and pick things up and just thinking... Why the hell am I keeping that and just threw it in the bin? I just do it. I don't think about it. If it's something like that, I just do it. Because if I think about it, the chances are I'm going to keep it. If I just do it, it's gone. I don't think about it. Um, I mean, there's, there's still bunches of stuff that I want to sell. I'm going to teach a um, close friend of mine to list things on eBay. Uh, one of the reasons for that is, you know, he's working two jobs and it's still barely, barely making ends meet. So I just thought, you know, if I teach him to sell on eBay, I'll perhaps find him something, you know, that he can put on there and make a bit of extra cash. teach them how to do it and I've got things I want to put on eBay there's some computers and things like in the kitchen some desktops I want to get rid of those now because I just sat here thinking you know there's stuff around this flat that I haven't done anything with in literally years there's a Windows XP desktop hiding down here which has literally been there for the last three years I put it there when we up uh, literally right after we filmed for Filthy House SOS um, and it's sat there ever since I've not actually pulled it out of that corner so I dread to think what's behind it same with these uh, PC games I know you've got a big pile of them it's stuff I'm not using and I'm thinking why the fudge am I keeping it <laughs> that is the main reason I sold most of my gaming consoles and games to my little brother he wanted to build his collection up, you know, now that he's settled in Northern Ireland with his girlfriend, you know, he wanted to get back into that. Um, so yeah, I sold it all to him. Ridiculously cheap, actually. I've got one more box to box up, and there's a Tiffany lamp to go in it, an Xbox original over there. Sega games. A Nintendo controller, and I think there's a Mega Drive controller somewhere as well. I want to cut rather bits up there. Um, I just haven't been able to get a big enough box. QD stores, round back, they have like big builders' ton sacks that they put all their cardboard boxes in. Obviously, in the pissing down of rain, they don't do that, so I've not been able to get a big enough box. <clears throat> 
But as soon as I can, I'll, you know, I'll get that last box sent to. I think it'll be like the fifth box after this. Um, I've actually got a couple of laptops here. Part of me actually wants to keep these two because they're touch screen. But the Acer down there has actually got um, graphics issues. So I don't know if I should just put that one on eBay as spares or repairs. Because I doubt I'm going to do anything with that one. I'd rather have the Sony Vio down here anyway. Is it Vio or Vio? Vio, I believe. Yeah, I'd rather have that one than the Asus, so... <clears throat> Problem is, to sort this flower, it's not just a case of making some space and putting some tables in. I've got to rearrange and reorganise every container of Lego that I've got. You know, I've got storage drawers all under the bench just here. <clears throat> I think they can actually stay there. They're not a problem under there. I've got drawers missing, so I need to sort all of that out and perhaps rearrange these drawers a bit so they make a bit more sense. Uh, but yeah, this stuff up in that far corner there's stuff right here beside the camera there's stuff in the corner of the bedroom right up in the far corner at the end of the bed and there's stuff in the kitchen underneath the worktop <clears throat> having said that I think a lot of it is going to be relatively easy to organize once I've got the actual table built because I can just stack a lot of the drawers and things up underneath that uh, and some of them I was thinking stacking up on the top here where my TV was on the uh, cabinet that the bike is leaning on oh that was the other thing I keep forgetting that to look I want new shelves up there actual brand new shelves because they just look horrible to me. I don't like them. I'm fed up looking at them. You can see at that far end, at the top one and the one underneath that are bowed. I don't even know what those boards have come from. I think they were just random bits of furniture I cut into like shelf like shapes. <laughs> but nothing matches up. The shelf bracket spacings don't match up, so it just looks hideous. Whereas, these ones are four exactly the same shelves with the brackets evenly spaced so it does look nice. And in fact, these shelves are actually uh, two wardrobe doors that I cut in half. That's all they are. In fact, underneath some of them, like this one, you might just be able to see the old hinge holes. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I'm happy with those ones because they look fine. It's just this lot over here, I, it just looks like, well, I did. I just basically slapped a load of wood on the wall. So I want to change that. <clears throat> and besides, the gap up this end here pisses me off. I'd rather have the whole lot just running in one long line. Um, so yeah, I want to have a look. I don't know what was, what's going to be the best place to look. b and Ikea? eBay? Amazon? Well, I suppose I can look on all of them, can't I? But yeah, that is one thing that's going to be probably high on my list. I think that lower shelf I might drop a little bit further. Might. have a bit more space but then I'm not going to have room to put a car on top of that speaker am I there's uh, not much room between that uh, cream Chevy truck I think it's a Chevy truck I can't remember off the top of my head but anyway there's not much room between that truck and the shelf as it is now 
then it won't be in line with the one above the PC, so I'm going to have to shuffle things about, I think. See what we can find. See if I can find some floating shelves or something, but I want quite long ones. And one thing I do want as well is blinds for those windows. I just don't like curtains. I've had curtains for 14 years, you know, the whole time I lived in this flat, I just want something different, man. So, I have to do some shopping, see what I can find, get some ideas of prices and whatnot. I know it's possible to put blinds on these windows because there is flats in this block that have them. Um, but I'm probably going to have to do that in like two halves, probably. One for like one side and one for the other. Because I can't imagine you'd get one to go the full width. Because that window is literally the full width of this lounge. Anyway, I think I've done enough rambling, so I'm going to shut the video down here. Nah, I'm getting tired and want to go to bed. So, thanks a lot for watching, everyone. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And uh, if you take a look down in the video description below the video, um, there will be links to my other two YouTube channels, my gaming channel and the Lego channel, which I'm bringing back next year. Uh, bringing back to life, that is, because it's been dormant for at least two years now, maybe longer. Um... Oh yeah, the Discord server, feel free to check that out as well, if you have Discord. If you haven't, I recommend getting it, because it is a good chat service. And my Twitch, because I do want to start streaming a lot more on Twitch. Anyway, as I said, thanks a lot for watching, and I will uh, see you all in the next video. Bye.